This is the film about a challenging trip to see the lava lake of the Erta Eyal volcano in the remote afar region of Ethiopia near its border with Eritrea. The region was key in the Eritrean-Ethiopian War which lasted from 1998 to 2000 and remained unstable until the final peace was agreed to in 2018. Many governments warn against any travel to the Erta Eyal region due to the lethal attacks on tourists at the volcano in 2012 and again in 2017, which killed six and injured more. Throughout our stay at Erta Eyal, we were accompanied by armed guards from the Afar tribe. Leaving the paved road, we started on an hour of off-road driving on sand to reach the tiny Afar village where the headman would sell us a permit to hike up Erta Ale and assign an armed guard to accompany us. The Afar region is one of the most inhospitable environments on Earth due to the temperature, which averages 34 degrees Celsius or 94 degrees Fahrenheit, and the precipitation, which only averages 200 millimeters or about 8 inches of rainfall per year. Like in a scene out of Mad Max, the 4x4 spread out and raced each other across the sand to avoid having to drive in the dust of other vehicles. At the nice government building, there were many armed Afar men awaiting for the headman to assign them a tour group to act as a security guard. Apart from the nice government building, the shacks in the Afar village were made of gnarly old trees and sheets of corrugated galvanized iron. The satellite dish was in Congress. Having purchased our Erta Ale permit and been assigned an armed security guard, we were back off across the sand towards the track through the lava field. There is no permanent road to Erta Ale, but that's changing as the Chinese are building a road to Erta Ale, which will severely impact the income of the Afar camel drivers that support tour groups visiting the volcano. We dropped off an Afar guard literally in the middle of nowhere and got to meet some of the Afar children in the area. Upon reaching the extensive lava field, we had a two hour drive over a very rough track on the volcanic rock. During the drive, we were tossed about the vehicle and often you could walk faster than drive over such terrain. We were lucky to see a jackal loping across the lava, although it's hard to know with certainty whether this animal is actually a wolf, as they are both similar in appearance and size. There are many camels that move supplies and equipment up and down Erta Ale for tourists. This is not difficult for the Afar, as traditionally they are nomadic pastoralists living in the light, flimsy houses which they transport from one location to the next on a camel's back. From base camp, we could see the summit of Erta Ale smoking in the distance. Base camp, like the summit camp, has no outside services like trash or sewer, so every water bottle that has been consumed, every piece of excrement, every piece of toilet paper or tampon discarded over the years is still there, where you're eating and sleeping. It's nasty as you try to find somewhere to do your business without stepping on something odious. Amidst the garbage, a fossil sponge showed that an ocean once covered the area which is below sea level.
The use of camels is widespread in the Afar region as the camel is ideally suited to the desert environment and can carry four times as much as a horse. The average camel can haul 600 pounds or 275 kilograms up to 20 miles per day at 2 to 3 miles per hour over an 8 hour day for 2 months at a time. The camel saddle comprises a wooden frame saddle padded with woven mats. Riding on a camel isn't an unalloyed joy, and although it's available to go up or to ale, it's certainly not a recommended approach. To avoid the heat of the day, we awaited for hours at the base camp in rock shelters until our departure time at 7 p.m. for the hike up or to ale. As sunset approached, base camp stirred and the camels were loaded for an evening departure. On their backs, pack camels have a framework of four long sticks that are roped together and onto this framework the load is tied. The 10 km hike up from base camp to the summit camp is normally undertaken after sunset to avoid the oppressive heat of the day. The 3 hour hike is not particularly hard as the slope is mild. However, care must be taken as part of the route is over rough lava in the dark. On our way up, we passed groups descending back down to base camp, but ominously none of them were raving about what they'd seen. After three hours of slogging uphill, we reached the rock shelters of the summit camp on the rim of the caldera, excited to be nearer to seeing the famous lava lake. You have many? I have many. Huh? I have many. Yeah. Okay. Huh? You have money. Oh, I don't have any. Oh. Sorry. Ask Kayanku. He'll, uh, he'll take care of you. From the camp, there is a wonderful view out over the plains of the Afar country. From the camp, it's a short hike down a steep, rough hewn rock stairway to get to the caldera floor and thence to the lava lake. The summit camp on the caldera rim overlooks the south pit crater where the lava lake is found. When not hiking or watching the volcano, I stayed in a breezy primitive rock shelter on the lip of the caldera. Urta Ale means smoking mountain in the local Afar language. Its main attraction is its persistent lava lake, which is a rare phenomenon. Only a few volcanoes have hosted persistent or near persistent lava lakes during recent times. Some tourists like to climb the Hornito that overlooks the lava lake to watch the sunrise. Having hiked up the Niragongo volcano in the Democratic Republic of the Congo to see its amazing lava lake, I was really looking forward to seeing Erta Ale's lava lake. Leaving the summit camp, we set off to explore the volcanic features on the summit caldera where hazardous acidic gases are encountered. As Erta Ale's craters and vents spew hazardous acidic gases such as sulfur dioxide and hydrogen chloride, an important piece of personal safety equipment is a gas mask designed against these acidic gases. As well, safety glasses that seal tightly around the eyes are helpful when the volcanic gases are so strong that they irritate the eyes. With this safety equipment, we could hike into areas that the lesser prepared visitors couldn't go. The lava from the 2018 eruption was surprisingly colorful, mainly due to the elements such as sulfur that were deposited by escaping volcanic gases. The Hornito from the 2018 eruption is a conical structure built up by lava ejected through the opening in the crust of a lava flow. We came upon a lava riverbed and an empty lava tube with some skylights that were formed when part of the roof collapsed into the tube. When lava is flowing through the tube, the skylight affords a view of the stream of lava. 
The AK-47 and AK-74 rounds littering the ground serve to remind us of why an armed escort is required. Excitement rose as we hiked from the North Pit Crater to the South Pit Crater to see its lava lake. However, all we saw was a smoking hole in the ground. Unfortunately, you never know if you'll see the lava lake or just a smoking hole in the ground. We were not too lucky, since during our visit, Erta Ale Lava Lake was completely obscured by smoke except for some brief glimpses of bright hot spots. A group of Italian tourists arrived at the summit camp at 10 p.m. and immediately set off down to the caldera floor and out to see the lava lake. However, as the lava lake was not visible, they immediately returned to the camp and set off back down the mountain. Their sense of disappointment was obvious and completely understandable. While we could hear the sound of bubbling lava far below us, the heavy stream of gas prevented any viewing of it. It was quite disappointing that Erta Ale's lava lake wasn't visible due to the intense acidic smoke belching forth and the strong possibility that the lake has largely drained. When I asked our tour guide when was the last time that the lava lake was visible, he said that it was over six months ago. Unfortunately, most tour companies offering trips to Erta Ale don't tell you if the odds of seeing the lava lake are slim to none, so beware. Back at the summit camp, camels were being loaded for return to the base camp. As we couldn't see anything of the lava lake, we decided to hike to see the state of the new lava vents and lava fields that started appearing in early 2017. The vents are located about 4 kilometers southeast of the summit camp, near the northern rim of the southeast caldera. During our hike, we were accompanied by our afar armed guard who walked across the undulating lava in his jelly sandals as if he was strolling in the park. It was very hot walking across the fresh black lava to the site of the new lava vents, as the black surface of the lava serves to magnify the heat from the searing sun. The temperature hovered around the 40 degree centigrade or 104 degree Fahrenheit mark. The omnipresent heat of 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit meant that oral rehydration salts and lots of water were required. However, there was little appetite for food. Leg hobbles on camels' fetlocks were required overnight to stop them rambling over long distance looking for food. It would take many hours to muster the camels in the morning if they were not hobbled. Loading pack camels is an art, not a science, so sometimes the camel must be unloaded and the load readjusted. It was hard to see how this camel and its load could remain upright if they were caught by a gust of wind. The camel driver appeared to come to the same conclusion and so reloaded the camel. Given that the lava lake couldn't be seen, we decided to leave the summit a day early and travel on to visit another site elsewhere, one that we could actually see.
We left the summer camp at 4.30 a.m. under a beautiful full moon, whose light assisted our descent across the rough lava fields. We passed by a group hiking up to see the lava lake, but we didn't have the heart to tell them that they wouldn't get to see the lava lake due to the gases. The bottom line is that it is no longer certain that there is a lava lake to see at Erta Ale, so if you want to see a lava lake there, then do your research about the volcano's current activities and don't trust your tour company's claims which are based on self-interest. I left the base camp with a deep sense of disappointment when comparing my amazing viewing of the Niragongo Volcano Lava Lake to my viewing of a smoking hole in the ground at the Erta Ale Lava Lake. Take me somewhere. 